All right, the time has come for our seventh assignment. This is the last assignment that I will be grading because assignment eight is your, your final project that is graded by class critique out of 10 points. So this is your last uh, three-point project as well. We just finished with individual presentations. Thank you for that. And you can scroll through just this unit modules, just these lists, right? These are all the things we've talked about. We started with a lot of compositing, kind of introductions to creatures, to landscapes, to animation. Started taking vectors more seriously with logo design, then combined them with line art and digital coloring for spot illustration, then did some type design as a vector, and then put them together for posters. And now digital painting is a raster way of working, and it's really the, the most direct and most um, most like traditional art of all the digital art skills, especially in 2D, because what we're doing is simply controlling every pixel on the screen and creating our own pixels, right? So here are some just digitally painted portraits. You might sketch them out this way, uh, depending on the finish you're looking for. If you want it to look soft, you'll use softer brushes. brushes. If you want it to look more like graphic and hard-edged you can change your brushes for that you can make it really colorful you get to really stylize as you want so we kind of wrap up with this project some of the different concepts we've been introduced to in digital art and we have our final question of the day so something i want you to think about and then respond to and the deadline for this is next class, November 16th by midnight, just so you don't spend too long, you know, procrastinating on it. But the question is, what sort of difficulties does digital art commonly run into about its value and validity that traditional art media doesn't usually have to deal with? So if digital painting is just like painting, except we're using a computer as the tool to do it, then the problem is the computer creates everything we put in with pixels, right? And that can be perfectly reproduced as data. But lots of other things can generate pixels as well, including stealing from other people's images, right? And compositing. But also now we're dealing with AI kind of image generators, which also produce pixels and sometimes pretty high quality pixels. And so I give you some that you can play with and most of these text generators, whether it's Dolly, whether it's Crayon, um, most of them give you the rights to the images you create. So you are, you are not infringing on anyone's copyright to use these pixels as your own or to modify them as your own. But it's really hard to understand how valid they are as your own work product, right? For instance, I generated all of these, but I didn't work hard enough to get all those clean edges and illusions of the metal, right? The co computer did that for me. So the computer is a tool that's always changing. It's always having more capabilities. And I want you to just try to dance with that and play with it. If you want to try out some of these AI, you can. If you want to learn about it, I really recommend this video. Just click, he click here to understand how these new uh, text generators, which are not even a year old in this newest form, how they do it. And then some of the older AI, which just composites, composites found images together. And they have problems. Like I say here, why does portrait generator AI turn everyone into a flawless white woman? And that's true enough. So I took my image. And if you generate and then generate from the things it generates long enough, it took about four steps. It will always be a white woman. You know, whether it's Louis Armstrong, whether it's Mark Twain, whether it's Maya Angelou. And that's because of the bias built into these AI generators. Same things, because there's more uh, art historical portraits in the 19th century, which is what portrait AI generator bases their composites on, than there are of any other kind of gender, skin tone, age, same thing with, with the AI that's running behind the scenes for these diffusion models. 
the mechanical owl here, golden owl with red mechanical eyes, if I just do a Google search of that, it's biased on what is available as online information, right? So if I do a Google search of that, these are the kind of images I'm going to find. And most of these are horned owls. In fact, I don't think I see anything that's not a horned owl. And a horned owl is just one type of owl, right? So the horned owl is the white woman of the owl online presence. And so, of course, when it generates things that it's trying to match based on what's out there, even though these diffusion-based generators are not doing it based on um, compositing, which is fascinating. You have to watch the video to understand it. But look, of these four generations, these are my four favorite, only one of them is not a horned owl, right? doesn't have those distinctive eyebrows. And so to think that this captures all of what owls could be is like thinking that a portrait generator can capture all the complexities of, of different people's uh, hair colors, skin colors, eye colors, nose shapes, mouths, ears, all that kind of thing. So there are definitely problems in, in AI, and that affects their validity as well. Now, all of that relates to value, and that's like how much do people value digital art now that a lot of it can be text-generated. And that definitely affects people who want to be digital artists because you need people to value your work enough to make a living at it. And so on and so on. So lots you can engage with there. How does this relate to digital painting? Well, digital painting is the most direct. You can see my little GIF animation of a demo here. You can approach it any way you want. I'll usually sketch first and then build up kind of speed paint layers and then keep refining and then even sometimes play with compositing on top or different textures and just having fun with it until I get to my desired result. You have two subjects that you can do for this. You can do a person from the shoulders up. I would say doing four people is too much. Don't do that. That was a, a commission as a reward for a campus contest. Or if you don't want to do a person from the shoulders up, you can do an animal. But I want the animal from head to toe. I don't want you to crop the animal at all. And we're just doing them on blank backgrounds. And what I love about doing the digital painting as a quick assignment like this, we only get a week to do it, is that I want you to be introduced to the techniques to play with it, but not be like overly perfectionist about trying to match a certain finish, right? So I actually really like how this unfinished digital painting turned out because it, it shows their kind of thinking and their process. And a lot of that can be embraced. You can push this in any direction you want. Remember, if you just do a blank white background, you can always add in a background later, like I did here. Uh, you can use this to do a stylized self-portrait, like this past student did. You can do it to make a, a happy holidays card, like I did here. You can do it as a gift for someone. But digital painting is simply controlling every pixel. We might use photos as reference, but we are not stealing any pixels. Right? We are creating all of our own pixels. When you paint on top of a photo, that's called rotoscoping. And some people like to digitally paint by rotoscoping, but I'm going to try to get you not to do that for this because I want you to, to stylize it throughout, like have your own hand, even in how you draw the things you're painting. So whether it's really loose, whether it's really airbrushed, we're going to figure out different steps. Now, I have these slides for you. You'll also see this under the assignment shortcuts. Uh, one is from a past student's presentation, right? So here is an artist named Max Reed that I think is pretty inspiring to me just because of how direct and kind of quick and unfiltered these digital paintings are. You can see the finished results. 
And even when they're doing kind of recognizable images, they definitely have their own color sense, their own take on it. And they're kind of embracing the fact that these are digital portraits, right? They don't always need to, to match what oil paint can do or what acrylic paint can do. And then if you go to assignments, you can get to this resource, which is really helpful for reviewing for the final and kind of different ways of thinking about digital painting. But if you go to assignments and you go to our digital paint shortcut, which is assignment seven, you'll also see an exhaustive explanation of digital painting, right? To go along with my exhaustive explanation of digital coloring and of CMYK separation. And what is digital painting? How is it different than digital coloring? Because this is usually coloring on top of a sketched line, not behind finished line work, right? And sometimes digital painters don't even start with a, uh, a sketch at all. There are also some handouts that can be found in the course under links. Handouts like this that show you some different approaches, right? So if you're not going to use any line sketching, like kind of pencil sketching, you can just start with big shapes. And often this is called speed painting. And you just see as the, the shapes get refined and then the brushes get refined to be either softer, harder, more opaque, less opaque, you can get to an almost photorealistic detail if you want, or you can push it towards another finish. This is using a sketch, a sketch, and then local flat color. And then this is just soft all the way through and then sharpens at the end. You can kind of go... Uh, hard to soft like this one does or soft to harder like this one does you can do it in a representational way you can do it in an abstracted way you can even push it towards non-representation i like to do digital painting in different layers and then strip things away it's like sanding down a painting taking it down to like the barest where it wouldn't even be recognizable as a portrait anymore and then picking and choosing what to use so we all come up with our own way. You want to pay attention to details in your reference, the things you want to really communicate clearly. That's what you play up in your painting. The problem with just matching a photograph or just painting on top of a photograph is that you don't get to choose the focal points that way. You want to grab color while in brush mode. We're going to steal color from our reference very often, but we can also steal color from other inspiration sources instead of always having to select our color from a color selector. And we're going to block them out first and work from the general to the specific. Here is a, a student example doing a portrait of Jack Black, starting with kind of basic shapes and then ending up with pretty refined brushes. Here's an animation of that. Digital painting is a lot of the same steps over and over. We're going to use the brush tool. We're going to learn to customize brushes, but then you just use the brush tool for hours and hours. Stealing colors with the option key, just painting, painting, painting. This was a self-portrait that same student did. You do not need to match reality, right? Now, some digital painters I like, they'll really be experimental, right? both with colors, with compositing, with textures, and they just finish it off by painting over the top. And then I just do kind of, I did Wonder Woman for digital coloring. I'm using dragon examples here. These are all different digital painters doing different dragons in different ways. So some of them start with a pretty loose sketch. Some of them start with a much more refined sketch. So you'll notice this one has a loose sketch and then it does really clean line art. It's never a vector, but it's really clean line art and then digitally colors it, but then starts painting over the line art to do the painting. So there's no lines on top. Otherwise that would be digital coloring, not digital painting by the end. And that's a little, a little uh, kind of a waste of time in a lot of ways. This one has a similar process. It's, it's looser line art, but then pretty clean. And then that's just used 
but by the end, notice how it's all atmospheric. This is kind of fantasy painting style. And so have fun with it. <laughs>